Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Photo Finale, and Advertech Printing. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Jeff Alexander, the president of Linden, Utah-based Alexander's, who is one of the largest printing, digital printing companies on the West Coast. Hey, Jeff, how are you today? I am great. Thank you very much. Tell me a little bit about Alexander's, because you're a relatively new entrant into the photo printing market, but your company's been around for a long time. We have. We, we began in 1979 as a retail copy center. Um, so we've always dealt in the copy segment of the market, which then um, evolved into the digital. Uh, and, that, and we made that jump into more of a commercial uh, setting in the um, mid-90s uh, by bringing on the Xerox DocuTex and started doing a lot of documentation printing at that time for the uh, technology industry. And then as we continued uh, into the late 90s, we, we got into more color, digital color with the, the indigo and uh, have uh, still using uh, that same technology. But of course, it's advanced a lot since then. But starting in about 2000, we began to really explore um, the technology side of things by developing our own web to print, mm-hmm. uh, doing a lot of variable print uh, and look for variable print opportunities. But it was very young then and, and, and uh, was new to people and hard to really come by in many ways. Sure. But we, de- we, we developed the web to print, mm-hmm. and that was the precursor to a product we used, we've used for many years, um, and has led to what we're doing today. So, so why did you choose to develop your own platform? Well, at that time, there wasn't anything that really fit what we wanted to do. We did buy some software in the beginning, but it was so complicated, mm-hmm. customers couldn't even fit into it, and it was hard to, <laughs> hard to use. And we noticed that in most cases with printing software, they were being developed by people that weren't in the print industry. So they really didn't fit what we were trying to accomplish. And so um, we went through two or three different versions before we settled on what, uh, what we've used since then. Having that long history was really beneficial to developing the platform. Um, and especially choosing that market and, and wanting to get into the digital side of things and stay there. Mm-hmm. We, we had a little bit of offset in, a, in our background, but not much. Small offset, small format mm-hmm. offset. And so that wasn't hard for us then uh, just a little bit over 10 years ago when we decided to totally abandon offset and go straight digital. And we have been. I'm sorry, been so you don't do any now. offset whatsoever now? It's all No, good. we don't. We'll, we'll vend that if we need it mm-hmm. um, on some of our products when that's necessary, but um, we have tried to stay in the uh, variable or personalization area mm-hmm. of digital printing. And that's what really, so we've been doing one-off printing for 20 years. What was your entree then into the photo personalized space? I mean, just because, you know, an HP Indigo can print color doesn't necessarily mean you're in that. The, the, the photo printing space. So what right. brought you into that? I, I think that the, the first step there, again, was our web to print because we began to set up uh, web portals for customers, especially in the franchise uh, sector. And so that allowed us to, to find out ways to personalize for individual settings. And again, mm-hmm. doing a lot of the one-off work. And, and then that led to uh, work with a, a local customer uh, by the name of chat books, yeah. uh, which is a, um, an, a photo book, a specialty photo book. And we were able to uh, onboard them quickly mm-hmm. and effectively with the, with the technology we have in place. And that helped us realize we could continue into other uh, segments of that photo space. We were already d- working with customers who had apps or websites mm-hmm. uh, where they were taking orders and their product was print. And right. so this just became a, uh, an easy add-on to that. This market became an easy add-on to that. So are you doing the front-end part of it too, or just the order implementation, like sucking it in from the... Yes, just it, it, uh, we'll, we'll hook in, they'll hook in with our API. We'll, we'll do that work for them, for mm-hmm. our customers. They, they develop their own front-end. 
Okay. They, they have their own ordering processes. And then uh, once the work comes to us, then we do all the print, um, any bindery functions that need to happen with it, and then mm -hmm. the uh, fulfillment shipping. So your plant there is in Linden, Utah. Tell me a little bit about the plant, like how big it is with some of the equipment you might have there. So we're, we, uh, it's a 65,000 square foot um, production facility. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of black and white capability still because we, we do work for some publishing companies. Most of our work is uh, digital color. Mm -hmm. Right now we have one um, 70, uh, HP Indigo 7900. Uh, we have three uh, in HP uh, 12,000s and then the new 100K. Mm -hmm. And so that's the backbone of, of how we get the printing accomplished for our customers. And then from there, we have a variety of a bindery um, with a lot of perfect binding, case binding. Mm -hmm. And we're just introducing the ability to, to sew uh, signatures and do a, more of a lay flat book. And are you also got involved, correct me if I'm wrong, on some of the embossing uh, features and some of those, right? I, I did leave out a very important point and that we, uh, uh, over five years ago, in some ways we, we pioneer a lot of things that we see coming that might be good. And we got involved with the MGI technology to do the uh, digital uh, varnish and foil. Okay. And that's been very, very popular, especially uh, with some of the work we do in the invitation space. Um, and uh, we use it on book covers as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. How has that worked to migrate some of that technology to some of your more consumer facing uh, customers? Because it is everything in that space is still one off. It, it works very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and if a customer has the ability to add it to their, their product uh, um, offering, uh, then most have found it to be effective. Now, we don't like to do that, of course, when there's not a lot of volume involved, because <laughs> it, it does make it really hard right. um, to, to only do just a strictly one-off because we batch our work like anybody else would. Yeah. But it's, it does, it's beautiful. And, mm -hmm. it, and it adds a ton of value to uh, our customers when they are able to have that product. That's one of the things I think has been maybe undersold by the photo personalization space is some of those cover treatments and varnishes and foil and to really set it off from just the traditional photo book. Have you seen that grow among your customers as a value added option or, or have some of them added in and, and have really not seen much success? So the ones that have, had the ability to add it. And, and part of the problem with this is just putting it into their order, their mm -hmm. application to, to right. allow it to happen. Right. Um, but those that have done it have seen um, an uptick in, in, in people wanting that as mm -hmm. an option. And right. again, it, it just adds a, a, a final touch to that product, which makes it more special to people. So what other segments of the industry besides the kind of subscription photo book market are growing? Have you gotten into, let's say, you know, wedding albums or other kinds of photo books? You know, it's interesting. We haven't gotten into wedding albums yet, but I think maybe one of the reasons is we, we haven't had a lay flat uh, alternative. And, and um, that's why we're uh, experimenting with uh, having sewn signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we, but we do a lot of work in calendars or in photo sets, um, other, other products like that. So it's mm -hmm. not just the book itself, but it can right. be any, and photo cards. I mean, uh, greeting cards and things like that, yeah. that have become very popular as well. Now, seasonally, how is that, how have you been able to manage that with your, your company? Because obviously the fourth quarter is crazy. Is your, does your other business come in at different times of the year? Has that worked out well for you? Yeah, so we've, we've tried to target um, some of our customer base to be around. Uh, so, so when we fill up one time of the year, we try to look for other options other right, times right. of the year. And, and we've been able to be pretty successful with that. But when you choose this space, you know that that uh, fourth quarter is just going to be busy. And, yeah. and so you... We, we continue to try to find other opportunities in other times of the year. We've been pretty successful with that. Yeah. Well, that's where I think, for example, maybe the wedding album thing will, will come into play, right? Because that's 
probably, you know, summer or fall type business as opposed to fourth quarter. And we do other wedding products um, besides the albums. Uh, some of the guest books that are used, sure. uh, the invitations. Um, so th there's a lot of other variety of wedding products besides the album that we've been able to, uh, mm -hmm. to use. And, and, and that, um, you're right, it, it has different times of year that make that uh, really applicable. Have you gotten into some of the other products that are maybe are looking at like sublimation products, like, um, you know, mugs or ornaments or those things, or are you just sticking with uh, inkjet? So right now we, we've stayed with um, uh, the, the more of the um, ink, you know, based, uh, uh, print sure. based sure. and haven't gotten much into sublimation. We do have some wide, uh, wide format department where we're able to uh, handle some of the extra things. And, and that goes back to our days when we were doing the, the web to print and we had a sure. lot of need for the wide format. Yeah. Um, and we've looked at sublimation, but right now uh, it, it hasn't fit into our production process well enough for us to, to jump into that. Go, moving forward into 2021, what do you see are some of the opportunities for the industry as a whole? Are you talking the photo or our, you know, print as a whole? That's <laughs> well, a, I guess because, I, I, I guess the both actually. So we continue to see um, a lot of benefit in in this industry as long as you're uh, geared up and ready to to do the one-off projects or something that's very custom. The print industry continues to struggle a little bit when it's just the long-run uh, commercial production stuff. Right. And so that's why we're, we're continuing to look at opportunities that will allow us to be even better than we are today at doing custom one-off. And, uh, and, and a lot of that is continuing to develop our pr production processes as much as anything. Uh, and so it, it's not just looking for new products, it's continuing to uh, improve how we produce the product that will make the bigger difference for our customer. It seems to me like part of the Alexander's direction is to be almost a self-contained or self-driven entity in the sense, you know, you develop your own software, you are continuing to refine your processes. Yeah, that's exactly right. We, we believed in technology. Again, this has been over 20 years that we've had people here uh, developing technology for us. Uh, we saw that pretty quickly and th that goes back to uh, when we had Xerox DocuTex and we knew we right. had to we had to get files to those machines and even Xerox wasn't ready to do that very well in the very beginning so even back mm -hmm. then I had people dealing with technology trying to help us get the files to those machines and so that continued in as we got as digital really developed right. a, a, as a um, as a segment of the industry and so since then, we, we have just always been heavily invested in, in technology, and we will. I don't see a time when you won't, because right. that's what is driving uh, product now. I've never met anyone yet who just takes anything off the shelf and goes with it. <laughs> it seems yeah. like everyone has, has, has a way they, they need to do things in their production facility, which is it's kind of interesting. Well, and, and we looked for a long, you know, going into the production side of things, we looked for a long time for something that could handle that for us. And it, you know, four or five years ago, we just realized we have, to, we, we hadn't been able to find anything that worked. And so right. we had to um, figure out a way to streamline our production so we, we don't lose track of product. Right. And so that's right. why we just dove head first and, and developed our own. And since then, others have come along and, and we've looked at switching over, but we're so far down the road now, uh, it just wouldn't make sense. From a, a staff DNA standpoint, right? You sort of have an idea that, hey, we can do this ourselves, right? A kind of a, a go for it attitude. Well, we're always looking for, um, for commercial software that we can use, but if we can't sure. find what's needed, then yes, we'll, we'll try and figure it out. And I think a lot of people do that now. They, they've yeah. just gotten to that point. Yeah, it seems to me like, like in the, it's interesting because like in the photo lab world, there used to be like chemical mixing text, text and people like that who would, you know, take care of those processes and those people have gone away. But instead of having a fewer amount of staff, now they've got programmers <laughs> and IT people. That's funny, isn't it? You know, our first, uh, 
we, we were in the photo space, I guess, for a while because uh, producing for our customers, because our, our first wide format machine was a Durst Lambda. Okay. And so, yeah, and yeah. so we, we knew about photo back then and mm -hmm. uh, did a great product. But that yeah. industry's changed too. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what has happened is, you know, the, the photo printing speed, because there used to be a, a separate technical process, right? You had the photographic process, which required chemistry and paper and well, ways of handling materials. Yeah. And then in the printing press, you had the printing world, you had a different set of technologies that needed to be in play. And, and as those technology platforms have given way to digital, you know, those worlds are intersecting. Everything's evolving, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff, for your time. Best wishes and great to hear more about Alexander's and looking forward to seeing more in the future. Thank you, Gary. I sure appreciate it. It's been uh, great to spend some time with you. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.